In Tableau 22.4, you can now natively support images on a dashboard. As you can see right here on screen, I've got a very simple URL to a set of images online. I've loaded it into Tableau and it's inside of a table. This is now native in Tableau, but there's a few catches. To find out more, let's get stuck in. Before we get stuck in, just one quick favor. 82% of the people watching this video in the last year aren't subscribed to the channel. And just to show you some context, nearly half of my subscribers came from this last year's worth of content. And if you look at how many views and how much time people are spending, I'm sure it's creating value somewhere. So if you really appreciate the content or would like to see even more of it at a better, higher quality standard, hit the sub button and enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, so to show you this feature, I'm actually going to use WebEdit and Tableau Cloud. I'll go ahead and create a new workbook by clicking on the new option. That brings up this interface. I can go ahead, select my file from my computer. I've got a sample file there. We can just hit enter and that will go ahead and upload that file to Tableau Cloud and now we are connected. One of the most frustrating things about WebEdit is it's just sometimes harder to do really simple things. So if I, I like to preview my data set before I get stuck in. It's actually really hard to do that here. There's no, there's sort of no button here. If you click on this drop down, you don't get any sort of way of previewing it. So here's a little trick. Go and get the count of records and put it on rows. You'll get a single bar chart. Click on that bar chart. You'll get this little table icon. You can go ahead and select that. You'll see the preview for the count of rows. I've got a thousand records, but you can then go to the full data set here and that shows you the underlying data behind the number of records. And so you get a preview of the data set. So here you can see I've got an avatar URL, uh, a couple of profile bits of information, some of it lowercase, some of it uppercase. I'm actually gonna show you how to produce that when we look at the capability called the proper function in another video. But the column I'm most interested in here is the avatar URL. You can see here that it's actually being generated from a service and that service can dynamically change the size of the image based on uh, what you give it. So it's got a parameter. And I've actually shown in another video a better service called Cloudinary, which does this to another level, it even does image transformations. Hold that thought for a second. I'll come back to it towards the end of the video. So this is the column we're going to be working with. And to be brutally honest, this image role capability is very simple. I've already found a few catches though. If I just go ahead and remove this, you can see that this avatar URL is the column I want to use for the image role. So I'll go ahead and click the drop down. Go down to a new option here that says image role and you can select URL. Uh, now it's really interesting that they've made that a separate sort of menu item because I, I keep trying to think like what other types of information could they add in here? One thought I had is that you could specify an image role and add a different type of encoding into that. So there is a method called base64 encoding which allows you to store images as text. So that could be another way of defining an image role through text, which would then allow databases to store images without actually having to hold the JPEG files. It's quite computer intensive. So maybe that will come in the future. But nonetheless, as soon as we've done that, you'll see that we have the avatar URL and it's now got an icon. It's the first time I've ever seen an image icon in Tableau in the data pane. So that's really good to see. Now that we've done that, it's super easy. But here's what I discovered. As soon as you drag it in, uh, that's the first thing everyone will do. Unfortunately, you get this rather not nice experience because this feature doesn't handle a certain number of images. In this case, it's saying filter to fewer than 500 images for this to work. Because I've got a thousand, I'm way over that limit. So what I'll do is I'll just select the first uh, few. I'll keep those records just by selecting those records and selecting this options once I click on those rows. And you can see the image role capability is now working as expected. Now these images can fit up to 300 by 300 nicely. And what we can do to kind of finish this visualization off is we can bring in the first name, put it on text, and now we have the avatar and name of uh, each of our uh, user profiles. So now that's natively supported in Tableau. The feature is as simple as that. You just specify an image role and it starts loading them in. What use cases might use this? Well, the sector that I think is going to benefit the most from this is fast moving consumer goods or anyone who works with products. You already have all the images typically hosted somewhere online, maybe for your website so people can purchase them. Maybe you already have the images as assets so you can refer to them in different services. Working with images is just something that's purely common in product based roles. So 
This is going to be really useful for you. So you can show people the products you're actually working with in an analytical context. Now, the challenge there is then working with those images is going to become a little bit tricky because Tableau does actually have a few requirements and you just can't go ham adding images absolutely everywhere. To show you this, what I'll do is I'll link to this in the description or the first comment in this video. If I bring it onto screen, there's actually a few caveats to be aware of. So you can see Tableau themselves have actually got images of shoes and you need to be able to prepare your data source in a certain way. You're going to need to have to use a specific extension format. Essentially, the two ways of specifying in JPEG and a PNG, no other image format works at the moment, which means no to GIFs. <laughs> I know that's something people are going to try to do animated things inside of a dashboard. I'm sure someone will figure out a hack. Um, and then you need to mesh, make sure that every URL is actually publicly accessible. The reason this is, um, in some cases, the URL might have to go through the public internet. And if it's not going to work because of security or firewall issues, then the images won't simply load. So if you have any sort of issues like that, you need to make sure that you really understand the architecture of your network at work or the network of the people who are going to be using this dashboard. And the easiest way to do that is just to make sure that the images are publicly available so that if I can visit them just by going to a URL as an absolute stranger, then it's going to work. And you might rely on sort of security by um, of sort of making the URLs difficult to guess, changing the URLs, and then having your database change those URLs frequently so they're being dynamically generated every so often and the data sources update as and when that happens. That's going to be probably the best form of uh, using security to do this. I'm sure there's other ways. Um, there are a couple of other sort of challenges as well. Though. If you go down, uh, there's a little bit of a limitation, and it's actually to do with performance. If I keep going down, actually, I might have skipped it already. There is a there's a limitation here to do with client side rendering, and so in instances where you've got uh, a lot of images, uh, Tableau has this concept called a complexity score, and if the score of the dashboard is over a certain level, what Tableau will do is it'll ask the server, the Tableau server or the Tableau cloud, to render the dashboard for you, rather than having that dashboard rendered here in the browser. In my case, Google Chrome. The difference there is that uh, sometimes client-side rendering, which is in Chrome, is often faster and server-side rendering is going to be slower. And so if you hit a certain level of complexity, and that's what this note here is about, uh, you're going to get slightly slower performance because it's going to have to require the server to do it and then send that information over the internet to the end user. And so that's why this is super important to be aware of. If you're going to hop into images, you might just see a slightly different experience to sort of what you're familiar with, especially if you're testing it locally in your desktop, it works fine. You put it on server and for some reason, it's just chugging along and it might be this particular use case. So I don't want to go into too much detail about that because it's a whole other topic to do with performance recording and uh, how Tableau Server and Tableau Cloud work. But check out this note about client side rendering and make sure you've had a look at it. Now, the other thing that Tableau have nicely done is look how to troubleshoot this because there's going to be a bunch of reasons why this doesn't work. And so at the bottom of this has actually got several guides on how to this, how to use this, how to make it work and a couple of other things to be aware of. Um, one of the things I think is going to be super interesting is you do have a recommended file size. Let me just try and find that for you. Uh, what is the recommended file size? I think I skipped past it. Here you go. Ensure that each Im image file is smaller than 100 128 kilobytes. And that is either really quite permissive or quite restrictive. It depends what images you're using. Because if I want to show an image that's black, well, I don't need much information or much data to be able to show that. However, if I have an image that has tons of colors in it, but it's very, very small, it might actually go over that limit very easily. And so what you're going to have to do is use a service that can dynamically make sure that the images don't go over this specific size. And that becomes very, very hard to do. If you're a photographer, you'll know that when you export an image, you can actually specify a maximum ceiling for a file size. When you're working with Tableau dashboards, that's just not something you want to be messing around with for the thousands of images you might be looking at. And also, it's quite hard to computationally process all those images again, upload them all to where they need to be, and then test this whole workflow. So that's why it's super important to check out the service that I've mentioned in the past called Cloudinary. What they do is essentially take the effort of doing all of that away from you. So let me go to their website. I've actually done a video on this already, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, go check out the video on that. But what they do is they essentially process images. And for the record, they're not the only company. They're just the company that I use and love. They process images for you in the cloud. And so what you can do is you can specify transformations, essentially edits to your images, 
by just changing the URL. I've, I've done this in another video. I'll put some images up on screen. But then what this will allow you to do is use things like parameters, use things like uh, specific uh, customizations for specific teams or specific departments on those images without you having to go out and render those images. It's quite a permissive service. You can actually do a lot of the testing you need and try this out with maybe one or two dashboards while still using the free plan. It's not expensive at all, in my opinion. So go ahead and check Cloudinary out. Check out the video on that topic because I've done a whole video already in anticipation of this feature. and I think you're gonna absolutely love it. So that's image roles in a nutshell. It's really quite a simple feature. I, For me, I just think it's about time we have this. It's gonna be super exciting. I think it's going to change the way people design dashboards. I don't think it's quite what everyone was looking for. I think what people wanted is a little bit more than this. Uh, no limitations on the number of images, maybe even more flexibility to do various things. But if you're being sensible with this, I think 500 is quite a nice number. It's quite a nice limit. And you can create dashboards and now start to tell a bit more of a story. In this particular case, I've just built a simple table to show the capability. In other videos in the future, not this one, I'm going to break down this feature and really show you what it can do. But as I like to do, I like to keep things simple. And I also hate hacks with a passion. If you want to know why, check out this video. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.